Hello everyone, my name is Selan Turkay. On behalf of my co-authors, I will briefly talk about our paper on virtual reality esports. You are probably familiar with virtual reality, which allows users to have simulated experiences that can be similar or different to real-world experiences. In the past several years, VR once again became popular thanks to the cheap consumer-grade VR hardware and increasing number of software, including training simulations in various fields and VR games such as Beat Saber. Another field which grew exponentially in the last decade is esports. Esports is a hugely successful and popular form of interactive entertainment. It is often described as competitive online gaming and involves both professional and amateur players. VR esports combine multiplayer competitive gaming with physical movements afforded by VR technology. Although VR esports has been around for the past several years, we know very little on uh, VR esports players' experiences with these games and what makes a good VR esports game. In our exploratory study, we aim to start filling this gap. Building on the prior research on player experiences, affordances of VR, and extra games, uh, we aim to understand players' attitudes towards VR esports games and their experience with a representative VR esports game. Due to time constraints, I will only present some of the findings on one research question. How do competitive VR esports players experience VR esports? We recruited eight professional or semi-professional CSGO players to participate in this study. Participants knew each other and played CSGO together in the past. None of the participants had any prior VR esports experience and had minimum VR experience. Our study had three phases, including one-on-one -on -one pre interviews team-based VR esports gameplay, and the focus group uh, post-interview. Interviews were recorded and transcribed in verbatim. Our team analyzed the data using thematic analysis. Participants in teams of four played a first-person shooter VR esports game called Soul Raiders. They played the game for two times at a local VR game arcade called um, Zero Latency. Our game consisted of uh, one, one game consisted of best of best out of three rounds, each played on different maps. Objectives include controlling a point on the map or having the highest number of kills within a set time. Here are some highlights from the findings. Players found the game quite immersive. They especially noted the embodied and spatial aspects of the game, which allowed them to use bodily movements such as dodging and crouching or hiding behind virtual, wo virtual walls as strategies. During the matches, participants' immersion was observed in their movements and communication, whereby they were seen to shout comments at each other while moving around the arena, crouching, leaning, or walking swiftly. Participants wanted to have higher interaction fidelity from the game. They thought that having props in the free roaming arena to help with the constraints of the game would improve their enjoyment. They also wanted to have enhanced haptic feedback and to be able to manipulate virtual objects in the game. Uh, the heights of the player avatars in the game reflected their actual height, and that was sometimes advantageous as a short player avatar can crouch and hide easily whereas a tall player avatar could be seen and targeted easily. Participants also talked about equipment and technology they used. They wished for better functioning gun props to improve their immersion in the game. They discussed the need for accurate tra tracking on the physical props, such as guns, for their positive game experiences. One of the major problems they had was with the bandwidth. While the first game session that they played had no technical problems, the second game session had latency issues, which made the game unresponsive at times and made communication difficult among the team members. Here are a few design implications. Standardized hitboxes. Player hitboxes had a significant impact on their player experiences. Players' hitboxes in the game were not standardized, and they were mapped to their real-world heights. With this in mind, games may benefit from standardizing the hitboxes so that no unfair advantage or disadvantage is given to specific players due to their real-world height. Participants desired higher levels of interaction fidelity. Using haptics and props could feel more realistic within the game world, potentially increasing levels of embodiment and immersion. By providing physical representation or props in ga game peripheral can potentially raise player skill caps as well. Participants stated their desire to be able to communicate with the opposing team during the game. While previous studies with esports found that this may cause negative behaviors such as toxicity, being in the same physical space may help alleviate such negative behaviors. Thank you very much for listening. Happy to take questions now.